Mayhem 2.0 is a prototype, 10 years in the making in my opinion. And yes, prototyping is a well-founded design philosophy that usually sees a product being used in closed tests in between engineers so that a project can get real-world testing. In video game terms, today, that means us. The defense of this patch is simple. The quarantine, they only had, had to work remotely and that, hey, at least it's new content. My counter to both is, there's been time, and if they needed to, they could have and likely should have delayed this patch. But, that my criticisms go deeper. That Mayhem 2.0 has issues in its core gameplay loop that only exaggerates problems that were already there. First, we've been here before. Borderlands 2 is largely considered a masterpiece, because it is, but it's an often stated and popular opinion that Borderlands 2's failings happen with the introduction of OP levels and UVHM. UVHM saw the exponential scaling become the death of all but the most optimized builds. Again, the counter runs, well that's all RPGs. But it doesn't have to be, and Borderlands isn't all RPGs. It's an RPG premised on procedurally generated gear fitting into unique builds inside a shooter. When it ceases to do that, it becomes like any other shooter, with a few necessary perks taken along the way just so you can participate. OP levels also saw console players, like today's Mayhem 2.0, having their systems fail to keep up, and without gibbed, requirements to dashboard and rerun the entire campaign ad nauseum. This is an idea tried in Borderlands 1 with Nox, another great concept that was like Mayhem 2.0, lacking incentive or reward after the first small arena, and suffered from extreme repetition. Repetition is a problem built into Borderlands 3's genes, as farming is just that, which is why I defend the takedown as a better way forward. Pre-sequel tried it with its Nox Redux, the Hollow Dome Onslaught. Again, the same core issues, massive time sync, only a few optimized builds and weapons being viable for zero reward. If a player already has to have optimized gear to run something, there's little point to that player doing the content. Hyperius for console players, the ultimate catch-22. How do you beat Hyperius? The Norfleet. How do you get the Norfleet? Hyperius. Granted, this change laid into the game's life cycle, but this still furthers my sentiment that Mayhem 2.0 isn't good, and where it will see some fixes, like the drop rate already being hotfixed. The most fundamental concerns are likely to plague it for some times. So hotfixes will slowly but surely make it better, but where do they get started on these core concerns? The first and foremost is stability on the console. The gameplay in the background isn't altered at all. This is on an Xbox One X with the game running off an SSD. The audio crashes out, the game chugs at 5 frames per second, it's difficult to tell what's happening or why it's happening. I can't tell what I'm shooting with the shield and all these effects going on at the screen at the same time. I'm always worried my game's gonna crash when we see a legendary drop. My buddies and myself saw insistent crashes. My friend Steven had the game and the console crash half a dozen times in less than an hour. And the technical issues are compounded by my second concern that the modifiers are not fun. I watched my buddy Justin shadow in game. We are all sitting there shooting at one guy that was phase locked and Justin just randomly dies because I guess the modifiers? There's just so much chaos that it makes for a bad shooter at this point. So these technical issues are compounded by the modifiers not being fun. And while it was promised on the Borderlands show that the team had watched streamers reroll perks until they got positive ones, so they saw that players like to be buffed alongside the enemy, and Mayhem 4 was an indication of what they were going to do going forward, they instead rolled a system of four debuffs that all either add a level of random obnoxiousness, like I mentioned Justin just randomly dying, to the already vomit-driven combat, or apply the one thing no one asked for, more buffs to enemy survivability. Enemies at Mayhem 10 stand tall at 12,500% more health, shield, and armor. So, like all Borderlands games before it, players find themselves using the same three or four weapons in their kit that can actually dent this massive health pull. Exacerbating this problem is that most modifiers accomplish giving the enemy even more survivability, resistance to crit damage of 90% or 90% immunity to elemental damage. The death orb, the thing that follows you without dying after killing an enemy, kills you and then you get a second win so it just downs you again, and your buddies can't revive you because the floor is lava and they can't touch you, is an example of, of these modifiers not being in the promise of you being strong right alongside the enemy. Therefore, the risk versus reward go out the window. Mayhem 2.0 was a mode that aimed straight at Diablo's torments, which see buffs for both sides, large reward, and even an element of competitiveness. Mayhem 2.0 brings a welcome quality of life change in putting Mayhem in the Echo Cast, but simply buffs enemies at the expense of the player. So 25 modifiers is reduced to the three that players will actually deal with. Systems failing, such as guns not indicating their Mayhem level, will be fixed. 
The carrot on the stick incentive for Mayhem 10 isn't enticing though. To summarize, Mayhem 2.0 is all the errors or prior prototypes in one go. Health has scaled massively, in the scaling build diversity and weapon and artifact choice has collapsed to only a few highly optimized choices. The game has become technically unstable on consoles and all reports I've had say the game is not able to run on legacy Xbox One or PS4s. There lacks any incentive to play at this difficulty and the action RPG has become a shallow shell of its former self. That being said, what can they do about it? The first thing that they need to do in short order is we need an indicator for gear dropped on Mayhem X. I imagine that this will be fixed uh, shortly. It seems to already be in game. I assume it's just a bug. We need more modifiers like 90% critical damage for 50% less body damage. That increase risk versus reward the give and the take that the player has asked for and that they promised. I will participate and get a huge reward if I play the game with this certain mechanic but I take the risk of not shooting them in the head and therefore doing less damage. All 25 modifiers should offer something like that to the player so that they're all a modifier that the player is willing to play with. Otherwise, it's just a waste as the player will just re-roll off it and never ever experience it. So there's no point in existing. Some modifiers like death need a total scrap until reworked. Here's an idea for the death. While death is active, you get 50% more grenade damage. It can't just be pure negative, and that's the biggest thing right now, and I imagine it's something that they shouldn't have that much difficulty changing. They just need to go into all the modifiers, look at them, and say, well, this has got this needs a plus and a negative to it. The issue that will take longer, it's one of the most pressing, it's the most pressing, but it's gonna take longer, is optimization. It's easier than said than done. I can't imagine any game wants to be seen as running on Elmer's glue and band-aids. I assume that all games want to be Doom. I know there's conspiracy theories out there that Oh, Borderlands purposely undertunes its games to resell them on the next console. I think that's bogus. I think that there's so much good word of mouth when you when people know that your game runs well, that no game dev wants their game to run like garbage. But unfortunately, Borderlands 3 just does not run well on console at this point or at all on the legacy hardware from what I've been told. Hopefully a short term fix that we can see for that. Battleborn offered a minimal setting and it cut down on particle effects, animations, etc. I would love to be able to do that on Borderlands 3. I want to be able to see through my shield. I don't need all this stuff on screen. I don't need to have 500 different damage indicators with critical written out every single time. If I could just cut down on a lot of those effects just to clean up my screen, see what I'm shooting at and stabilize the game on console at 30 FPS without crashing, I'd be happy. Yeah, I'd have to give a little bit. That's fine by me. So, and I, and I imagine that's something that they could do in the short term because it's not going to take any fundamental reworking of the algorithms of the way that stuff is drawn or this takes up less memory here and that takes up less memory there. It's just get rid of some stuff it, by the player's choice. They can just get rid of some stuff on the screen. It's a priority in my opinion, and I know they can't fix it overnight, but I can't play Borderlands 3 on console at this point. It is too much of a chore and it and unfortunately isn't fun and I, I'm a fan. This is, I've been playing Borderlands, uh, you know, since the first one I pre-ordered early. I'm with most of you. I'm a big fan, okay? You know, Borderlands is our game for a lot of us. I can't play it in this state. Fourth thing is the fundamentals that go beyond the quality of life changes that are sure to make their way slowly but surely into the game, which is the game's long-term health as an action RPG. And this has two elements, two thoughts. First is that Borderlands 3 was a series of positive patches and changes from DLC 1 up to this point. There was buffs to low-tier legendaries, there was level cap increases, there was new activities, new events. Borderlands 3 from DLC 1 on was onward and upward. That has come to a full stop. Progress has been halted because of Mayhem 2.0. A lot of that is because the alterations that were done to the guns were just raw number changes. So lo and behold, most of that is now just broken. Just as UVHM originally broke Borderlands 2. Skills fail to scale. Grenades fail to scale, shields and class mods are static, melee isn't scaling. The gun buff yesterday wasn't algorithmically changed. So when you just say, well, the lob does 10,000 damage now, yeah, sure, it scales okay, but it's that doesn't mean you have a permanent scaling that that weapon's always going to be good. Well, it was good at this point, but because it's a raw number change, it's not necessarily good at that point. Which By which I mean that the first few hotfixes to the game reflected the intention to keep the game scaling at a smooth rate. TDRs were buffed by 25%, Mali 1's rate of fire, etc. The buffs of the last two months had been basically just hard number changes, just changed the raw data. This gun now does 10,000 more damage, rather than a core rebalance of certain models, brands, and guns. The second thought and element to that is that when Borderlands breaks down into just you, Salvador, and the Herald, it just becomes a worse version of Destiny. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And I'm making a Borderlands video, not a Destiny video. I quit Destiny a long time ago. 
I play Borderlands, so don't start how you can't compare the two. You can. They compete in the same space. And Destiny has unfortunately largely been beating Borderlands 3 for the past year until this whole Trials thing came out. They coexist in the sense that Destiny has always been fundamentally a shooter with some role-playing mechanics. And Borderlands, from its inception, Go back and you play the first one if you don't agree with me here. It was an RPG, then it was a shooter. The shooting mechanics have always remained solid, and they've stayed up to date. I, I can't call Borderlands a cutting-edge shooter. Yeah, it has sliding and mantling, the thing that Brink had, you know, 10 years ago at this point. All three Borderlands games are more focused upon your build and the damage output of that build, being in this story-driven world, and not whether or not you crack the headshot before Atheon cleansed you or not. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's Borderlands strength. It's what sets it apart. It's it's a fundamentally solid shooter, but first and foremost, it's a it's an action RPG. So when Borderlands scales to this point, the builds just become copy and paste. You want to you hunt for the best class mod shield or you look at whatever build is really popular right now that can actually compete at this difficulty and it means that that unique pile of gear that's on the ground just boils down to it's crap if it's not this exact thing that actually works at this point so we end up with a game no different than doom or destiny or cod in the sense that players are all using the exact same guns except they're worse than those games a headshot in destiny or cod or doom is, is going to kill something where you're going to have a series of mechanics that are going to result in a very quick damage uh, you know a lot of damage or a quick kill in doom in borderlands you need to shoot an enemy sometimes for minutes minutes at a time so that means it's a good shooter it, it's still at its at its very core it's still an rpg and the rpg if evaporates when it becomes like this so my belief is that from release uh, it, it doesn't have to be that way because you have something like the takedown that is requiring that you still play the game well and you and you have a build that can survive and you have a build that can do damage and that you can play and move in you can still have a really good shooter and an rpg i think the takedown personally is an indicator of that. I don't think Mayhem 2.0 is an indicator of that because Mayhem 2.0 is about get the best guns, get the best gear so that you can produce enough damage to actually kill something, but that's it. My belief from release through this Mayhem 2.0 prototype is that Borderlands strength lays in being fundamentally an action RPG. I own better shooters. Borderlands 3's devs saying there won't be new characters is fine, at least they're honest, but then we need new skill trees on the current character. Borderlands 3 devs are saying there won't be Pearl Essence or Ever of Essence. Boo. We need new tiers and rarities of weaponry. We need gear sets. We need new skill trees. We need all the goodies that make RPGs great. A gun, a shield, an artifact can become a gear set for the takedown. The takedown was the biggest step taken to solidify Borderlands as a great action RPG. As a powerful SMG, the redistributor was put behind difficult endgame content, creating that carrot in the, on the stick incentive reward for players to take on that challenge. Otherwise, Borderlands 3 has been reduced to kill this boss enough times to get the weapon everyone uses, then I don't know, shoot stuff with it. The game's strength is the procedural generation that no one has, a system that gets 99% ignored in all four of the games now, because it's more about whether the one gun works rolled with Y or not. I personally enjoy the first playthrough of all four Borderlands games the most, because it's when I'm the most inclined to change my gear, look at the things on the ground, put on this random shield, see what it does. That's what's really fun about Borderlands to me, is trying out new equipment, trying out new builds, trying out new gear. I don't like being pigeonholed into just one build just to play the game. At this point, at the introduction of Mayhem 2.0, the entire procedural generation system becomes it's more about whether the one gun that works rolled with Y or not. Without technical stability, fun modifiers that balance risk and reward, and incentive in the form of action RPG mechanics like loot and power, no matter the slow and steady balancing of this prototype, 10 years in the making by the way, like Nox, like UVHM and OP levels, like the Holodrum Assault, there just isn't a point. I have a lob already. I don't even want nothing else. I'm done with this game. Launch the fuck out of it, then. You're gonna. Start I have wrecking. been just shooting this damn gun. Good. I've just been shooting. It's corrosive though, sadly. Hopefully you get a fire one too. 